Now, our special guest today is George Labisi. I Woo. forgot to do that. But he's such a legend and he's without a doubt a household name in the world of soccer. His dream of becoming a professional soccer player became a reality for him when he was 19 years old and hit high when he was recruited for the South African national football team, Bafana Bafana, at only 22 years old. As one of the best wingers in the country, George is a soccer hero for so many aspiring soccer players and he is going to teach me all of his signature moves. <laughs> the ball is too hard. Oh, look at you! Hi, George. Hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Good, have a seat. Right. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I mean, how many hours did you spend as a child playing with that ball? Just because I think it's practice. Hey, it's just dedication. You don't count. Practice. You don't count as a kid. It's just for fun. Just yeah. do it the whole day, basically. From how old do you remember? Like from being just a tiny child? Uh, seven, six. Yeah. Or maybe five. And just all day you were just busy. Yeah, with the, ball. the whole day. My parents had to call me from the streets from playing football. So, it's been first love. And then when did they realise that you had a special talent? Because uh, obviously you loved soccer, but I think all little boys love yeah. soccer. So I, when did they realise that you? Were I think special? they didn't know. Uh, it came from people in the streets coming to the house. They're like, you really should take it seriously. I think he's got something. Yeah. I didn't know I had something also, I was just doing it for fun. So until my parents got involved, started pushing me, yeah. trials here and there, and then yeah. until junior, then next thing, boom, Chiefs. That's such an outstanding story. But I mean, where do we, like, tell us a little bit about your, where you grew up and how you had the opportunity to be discovered. Um, I, grew up, I grew up with both my parents. Yeah. I was never home, so yeah. always playing in the streets. But a couple of people spotted me. I don't want to mention names because I'm going to forget some of the other people that helped me. Yeah. So until some of them took me to trials, I failed some trials. And then fortunately, I played for Acadia. Yeah. And then Acadia from there on was professional Vodacom and then trials elsewhere. And then I ended up professional. Incredible. How yeah. do trials work? Like, are they all children in the same age group as you? And are you put into different skill levels or different ages? How does it work? And then who's there to find you? With me, it was different because they took me to professional teams. Really? To, to really test me if I'm ready. Yeah. And then by the time I was still young, so they had to give me time to, like, get used to playing with the older guys. And they had to look if I have the skill or they still needed to nurture it, you know? Yeah. So. Until then, then they said, no, wait a minute, play development. You'll come back in a year or two. And then I did that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think your life must have just changed. Yeah, it changed drastically. I, I wasn't expecting it because in my journey, I thought I was going to start like semi-pro. Yeah. And then, but to jump everything else and go to, straight to the Premier League, wow. it was a big move. Were you able to finish school? No. Really? I didn't. I didn't. I had to go back because... Uh, then I was writing my matrix, so I had to tell my parents, look, this is my dream. I yeah. can still come back to school, exactly. but this dream can be taken away from me. Yeah. So if it's taken away and someone else fills that spot, then I won't ever yeah. get it. So I chose to do that, and fortunately, they listened to me. It's yeah. the hardest thing a parent can ever do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a very difficult decision. Yeah, it was hard but obviously, decision. you were good, and you followed your heart, and it's worked out for you. Yeah. But I think you must be, in, you know, that the helm of such immense pressure at such a young age, especially going straight to Premier League. Yeah. Like, did that make you grow up and become a man a lot quicker? Yeah, because when I left Pretoria, I had to go to Joburg. Yeah. I had my first apartment when I was only 19. Wow. I had no idea what was happening. But uh, by the age of 20, I asked my brother to come live with me because I was struggling here and there. Yeah. Cooking was one of my struggles. It still <laughs> is. I, have I will basic... teach you a hot dish today, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> so I had to, to teach myself. I had to grow up and be a man at such a young age and yeah. a breadwinner at home. So. Yeah. It worked out fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. We're very, very proud of you. Definitely. What about your football style? How do you think it's adapted and changed? Like, when I watch soccer, and I love watch. I don't know if I love watching soccer, if I love watching soccer players. <laughs> but <laughs> is there, like, a very unique, very different style between the kind of game that you play here in South Africa versus what they're playing in the English Premier League, for example? I think, uh, as a country, we're learning from European countries and how they play, yeah. how they manage their players, the before and the after game. So... I think we're catching up. We're not far off. And yeah. at this moment, we, we're doing very well for the country, yeah. you know? 
see we also uh, competing for the African nation sport and yeah. possibly World Cup, you know. It's, we have, we, we're there, I think we're there. Yeah, and you guys are really good. I think, Tech, if you look at how footballers are so hero-worshipped in South Africa and across the world, it also adds an extreme amount of stress on you. I remember watching the one yeah. Liverpool game where the goalkeeper missed one yeah. of the penalty shots and next thing he had death threats and he had the whole country. Yeah. Like, how do you handle that? How do you stay focused on the game where there's so much going else around it? The mind, the mind game is very important in, yeah. in, in sport. You know, you need to, to be strong and it happens. Unfortunately, we're the ones that are going to make the mistakes, the ones that are in the field. Yeah. So you just have to take it like a professional, be mentally strong. Anyone can make a mistake. It's yeah. about how you come back from that mistake and keep going forward, yeah. living your dream. Not everyone had an opportunity to be professional. Of course. At the end of the day, remember that. And what are those things that you do, like in your daily practice, to, to make yourself mindful, I suppose, so that you can stay completely focused? I basically listen to sermons, inspiring sermons, and try to motivate myself especially, because yeah. I'm, I'm alone in that field. Besides the team, I have my own brain, so I have to motivate myself. and and yeah. really, really be up for it. So tell me about, you're a winger. What exactly does the winger do? So in the field of 11 players, yeah. there is, on the sides, that's where the, wing, the wingers are. So both okay. sides, like a right winger yeah. and a left winger. So okay. I'm left-footed, so I'm on the left. Okay. Yeah. And that's then right. are you the guy that scores the goals? Yeah, I'm in between both. There's strikers and defenders. I'm between them. I okay. defend and I also attack. Okay, so, so you've got to be them. like the fastest guy on the field. Not really fast, but you have to be very fit. Really? To run up and down the field for 90 minutes. Amazing. Yeah. I'm going to teach you, I'm going to ask you to teach me a little while, but I first want to know about the George Lebesi Foundation. Yes. Um, it's a non-profitable uh, organization yeah. that uh, makes uh, social events. Yeah. Basically, for me, I just believe in giving back. So. I use that as a platform to, to give back to the less privileged. Yeah. yeah. And you do that with some of your teammates. Who's involved? And then how? Like, tell us about some of the events or some of the programs that you've run. Uh, I get support from, from my ex-teammates, my yeah. friends that are in the same profession. We make like soccer clinics. We try to give back wherever we can. Yeah. We just, we just don't want to bind ourselves into to sport only. Yeah. It could be anything, education, whatever yeah. we can. We try and help and give back because I know what it's like not to have anything. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. And you've gone to back to school. I, 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 you yeah, you've finished. Part -time. So obviously you can tell it's, people how uh, vital yeah, it is. Yeah, because football, it, you need your full attention there. So yeah. you, you need your full, full attention because, you, like you said now, the mental game. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't want to be all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember a couple of years ago, I went to the Man United tra uh, training grounds and I went to a couple of games there. And we went like behind the scenes to meet some of the players. And it's radical how when you see them in the, you know, in the media, they've actually got such absolute discipline and their nutrition is tight. You've yeah, got yeah. so many factors yeah. working on you being a great footballer. Like I suppose you've got that here as well. How disciplined do you have to be in terms of diet, in terms of other kinds of training other than just soccer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, in a day we train for, for two hours max. Yeah. It's not enough for a match. Really? So you, you re it's up to you like to push yourself and to have a proper diet. Yeah. I can't just eat anything, sure. you know. In, in football, we've always been told, you are what you eat. So if yeah. you eat something that's not good, you're not going to perform well. Yeah. So, yeah, you have to eat right, train right, rest properly, yeah. and stay focused. Great. Well, we've got so much to discuss with you. But for now, I want you to, to just teach me something, because we're going to be doing a competition a little bit later. But first... What is the key to becoming a good striker, a good winger? I've got some bingo wings going, but I want to get rid of those. Hopefully training some soccer will teach me okay. how to be good. Okay, we've got brand new balls. Okay, do you think you can get it in there? Yeah, You're a left. I'm a lefty, so I can use my right as well. Okay, I yeah. can use my right, but I'm going to try and use my left for this. Are you sure you So which do? is the part you of your foot that you kick with? You can come this side. It, it's easier for you with your right. Okay, no worries. But which is the part of the leg, the foot that you kick with? The middle part, like that part there. Yeah. To try and get it straight. Have you played golf before? I have played golf. Well, golf is my handicap, but yes, <laughs> I do play every now and then. Yeah, it's like with the club. When you hit the yeah. ball, golf ball with the club, it has okay. to be like, pass okay. it in the middle so it can go to the direction okay, that you're I'm going to pretend in. my leg is the golf club. Uh. <laughs> do you play golf? Posh, uh, partly. Do you think yeah. it's, a, like, do you think all sportsmen 
would be, you know, do well in sports regardless of what it is? Yeah, I think, it, I think okay, depends because rugby and... Okay, uh, let's see, let's see if uh, Mrs. Ronaldo has got what it takes. I can see what even the takes. way you're standing like... Ah! Okay. Ah! <laughs> I got it! Okay, <laughs> that's nice. Nobody clapped. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you So can... I have to do that. Yeah. I mean, okay. can you? I'm going to try to use my right <laughs> to make it more fair. Okay. Oh! <laughs> So I tell you what, we've got two of these amazing balls and we are going to give them away. How about you start winning? So enter on the competition post that is posted on the Afternoon Express Facebook page by commenting on the most uh, on the post describing what meal would you prepare if you had George Labisi over for a cook-along. Let us know and stand a chance to win a soccer ball signed by myself and George Labisi himself. So I'm not going to ask you what your favourite style of cooking and eating is yet. But yes, win these balls. I think George and I are going to sign them for you and you could be a winner think quick <laughs> we'll see you after the break